So on to some of the questions that have been uh, posed to me for Horn Week this week. What is your earliest musical memory? I'd have to say that that was uh, using a little uh, Fisher-Price uh, record player. You know those ones that had like a little yellow plastic records that you would play with them? I was fascinated by the fact that you could get sound to come out of a little plastic thing that just spun around. And then having a record player, I remember listening over and over again to certain songs and certain albums. Uh, my parents had Peter, Paul, and Mary, and uh, they uh, enjoyed uh, a number of like folk music, classical music, light classical, and I would just sit there and I would put the speakers uh, angled towards each other and I would put my head between them and just imagine being in a concert hall. And uh, that was just the best for me, uh, just uh, old phonographs. And I keep getting ads for record players, so I'm pretty sure that somewhere uh, Google has heard me say this. So next question, which horn players had the most influence on your playing? Well, growing up, it definitely, I would have to say that it was uh, Eifer James, Alan Sybil, and Dennis Brain, the British horn players that were recording. And uh, I managed to meet uh, two out of three of them. I never met Dennis Brain, he passed away before I was born. But uh, the chance to meet those great British horn players, such a distinguished, noble sound uh, that they had. And uh, then I would say later on, it was the uh, Hollywood School, uh, James Decker, all of those incredible recordings that he did over uh, an incredible span of time uh, that he uh, was active in the Hollywood scene. And we will all know his recordings, even if you don't know his name. So how old was I when I started playing horn and what you drew you to it? I think that it was really almost like the shape and the exoticness of the horn that really uh, excited me when I first saw uh, symphony orchestras. It just seemed like such an unusual and wild instrument. And the sound was just so exciting to me. I think everyone is, that uh, loves the horn is drawn to the sound of it uh, at first. And I didn't, uh, I remember hearing it for the first time and say, oh, that's what that instrument is. And uh, I just uh, thought it was just the most uh, beautiful part of the orchestra. Do I play any other instruments? Uh, I play piano very badly, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, the horn is a bit of a beast, and it takes up all the time I have for practicing, so I spend my time with that. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Vancouver, and I grew up there. I went to University of British Columbia, so for the first 21 years of my life, I spent in BC, and then I branched out from there. What other countries have you studied, lived, and worked in? Well, actually, I felt like in Canada, growing up as a horn player, uh, the world came to us in a lot of ways. Courtney Youth Music Center uh, with uh, Wayne Jeffrey brought in wonderful, wonderful horn players from all over the world. I got to study with Michael Hutzel from Germany, uh, got to meet Eifer James there. Uh, then when I was going to the Banff School of Fine Arts, uh, I got to study there with a couple of uh, renowned players from uh, overseas as well, Freudus Wieberg. Roland Pandolfi from the States. So I felt like I didn't really need to travel anywhere to uh, get a sort of complete worldview. 
of, of playing. So I feel very fortunate in that way. That said, uh, once I graduated, I did go down and study for a couple of years in New York with uh, Philip Myers, who was the uh, principal horn of the New York Philharmonic, and just sort of immersed myself uh, once in a while uh, in that incredible uh, New York scene. So next question, which composer writes best for horn? Uh, in terms of uh, anybody sort of from the period of time when the horn was really fully developed as a valved horn, I would have to say Brahms and Strauss. Those are the people that just write the best for the instrument. And there are some people that write for some uh, extended technique, which are always very vivid in my mind. Uh, John Corleano uh, came to the music festival a couple of years ago, and I thought that he was writing for some very interesting, fun sounds for the horn. So uh, there are people out there that uh, write for extended technique of the horn, uh, and yet it's still uh, very interesting to play for. What's your favorite hobby outside of music? Well, as I mentioned, I live on a hobby farm, so that gives you kind of an idea. We are uh, raising heritage chickens and also some uh, rescue hens uh, that came from the factory setting. And that's been very interesting to see that uh, happening. We also raise turkeys, which uh, provides a lot of amusement and hilarity as well. Uh, that's a very different species. Uh, we also have several unique uh, horses Ojibwe horses we've been caretaking for the last few years. In fact, uh, the first Ojibwe foal to be born in Manitoba since the breed was uh, apparently extirpated several uh, decades ago was born this springtime. So uh, that has been quite uh, a deep and meaningful experience for us to uh, not only care for these horses, but also then share them with uh, our First Nation friends your favorite type of food? I really love Ethiopian food and I think my favorite place is over on Cumberland Street and that's called Mercato so I do check them out. If you weren't a professional musician what would you do for work or what profession interests you? That is such a difficult question because I think that any musician is really doing it fundamentally because uh, they love sharing what they do with other people and it's been a privilege and an honor to uh, have that as a profession. That's as much as I will say. One of the best and worst things about playing in an orchestra, the best thing has got to be uh, my colleagues because uh, listening to inspiring playing uh, all the time, of course, we're not doing that right now with COVID, but, uh, but I would say listening to the beautiful sounds that people are trying to do and, and what we're trying to do and come together, uh, I think that's the, the best. The worst thing is that sometimes it can be very stressful because uh, I think somebody said that uh, horn playing ranks up there with neurosurgery in terms of stress as an occupation because uh, there are no retakes when you're on stage. You just have to put yourself out there. So it's a practice of uh, being very free and creative and kind of not caring what happens. And at the same time, you have to care passionately for what happens. So you're always on that razor's edge. So thanks for listening and thanks for caring so much about the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. We just can't wait to play for you again in the concert hall and keep checking back for content on this page and subscribe and follow it too. So uh, we uh, really appreciate you very much for supporting us uh, and can't wait to play for you in person again.